Hey guys, everyone okay? Cool, thanks a lot for coming to our talk. Uh, it's been, uh, we, we've been uh, building this for quite a while. Essentially, it's uh, our uh, journey through how we build security pipelines for our current place. Uh, we face some interesting tasks and uh, I believe we solve them in some interesting ways. Uh, so here's what we're going to talk about. Come in. Uh, pretty much some questions for you, who we are, our environment challenge, uh, some existing solutions we found and their limitations, uh, our unique requirements or unique to us, uh, what we chose to go with, we'll give you a quick demo, uh, advantages of what we did and what we totally promise to do in the future, <laughs> right? We'll try not to be yet another project that uh, presents and then... Uh, wait, wait, what are you commit committing us to now? <laughs> <laughs> so, if you change the slides... Yeah, so, I'm Spiros. Uh, I like to say I do security engineering. More often, I just chase people to fix things. <laughs> um, I focus on application. That's why I always spread. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. I, I work for these guys at a London-based uh, financial technology company called Thought Machine. Uh, they pay the bills. And, uh, yeah, I, I contribute to open source as much as I can. Uh, I've been doing all, all watch things for many, many years now. Yeah, and, and hi, guys. I'm, I'm Henry. Uh, I also work with Spiros on the same team at Thought Machine. Um, I, I t while he's breaking stuff, I'm trying to stop him normally. It's like a challenge. But um, yeah, I, I write, I'm a back-end engineer writing code um, and, and trying to write tools for, for security. Um, and this is one of the things we've been working on uh, that we'll talk about. Um, you can also find me on various places like GitHub or Twitter as stake underscore. Um, yeah. So, so some questions for you first, so we can set the tone. Uh, does anybody do any security testing in the release pipeline, Hans? Uh, OK. Nice. We're doing good. We're doing good. Yeah. Uh, so you guys support multiple languages, right? Like you don't only start one like static code analysis tool and that's it. Right? Three. Three. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, dynamic testing, anybody? Automatic dynamic testing, right? Uh, because static just drowns you in false positives, right? <laughs> and some things may be fixed upstream. Uh, Configuration per team? Yes, kind of, right? Yes, awesome, thank you. And who has less than 10 hours per week budget to do this? <laughs> right, like when you, when you tell your boss, thank you. Uh, we are in the same boat, right? <laughs> when you're spending time chasing people the whole time. Yeah, like you have, there is only 40 hours in your work, your work week, otherwise you don't have a life. And um, yeah, you need to you need to somehow prioritize things. And uh, the company is a startup. We don't have budget for like a dedicated like pipeline security testing team as the others do. So I'm uh, constrained. Hi, welcome. Uh, so you want to talk about our yeah. environment a bit? So, so I'll introduce uh, a bit about like our environment, um, which probably resonates with a few people, I'm sure. Um, yeah, we, we, we run a microservices architecture uh, on top of Kubernetes. Um, and it's all very, uh, it, lots of teams owning their own services, doing their own thing, doing their own languages. Um, and, and with that, we also expect the, the developers, the engineers to own their own services. So they, they often deploy their own things. Um, <laughs> you don't like that that much, do you? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, 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 there's, a, there's release teams involved, um, but they are normally just providing tooling to help the teams actually do their releases. Um, yeah, and, and with that comes... Uh, well, with fintech comes a lot of traceability as well. Well, there should be, and not always happens. But um, so we, we want to know like what scanners happened when, or what scans happened, what pen tests happened when, and, and how, and what were the results. And and if, if clients come to us and say, hey, like we found this issue, did you see it previously? We can come back and say, oh, this is what we did. Yeah, and also like if you ask our bosses, we do DevOps, right? That's the hot word here. <laughs> um, 
essentially it means we release as fast as possible so we can go to the customers as fast as possible, <laughs> right? So we need to run behind people. Uh, they don't come to us and we cannot block anything because that's not DevOps. And it makes sense in, in like in the current world, it makes sense. You, you cannot have like six month releases and then security having the ability to block things. That's not how we do things. And, um, that's our challenge. So we, we onboarded, uh, a few months ago and we found an environment with like Kubernetes, a bunch of microservices living and dying, uh, teams working on projects that might be short lived, but these projects needing the same amount of security as like the core product. Uh, we write in about four official languages, emphasis on official, uh, and we needed to build something that's usable by engineers because quick release cycle, I cannot be the only one uh, running things. Uh, so engineers needed to be able to find something. Ideally, it would run as a linter. And again, quick release cycle, right? Uh, so go to the next one. So the very first thing we did as everybody... I uh, try to be lazy mm -hmm. and find something off the shelf efficient, or find efficient, not lazy. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, find something off the shelf or somebody else to borrow things from, right? I, ideally, it would be a nice uh, GitHub repository with all the things I need and then just import, run. Of course, it didn't work. So, uh, in the past and most uh, presentations I've seen on the subject, and talks with like some of you. Um, everybody seems to be doing something like that. There are pretty good tools out there that are either commercial or non-commercial that do both static and dynamic analysis, e.g. Uh, Zap, for example. It's pretty good at doing dynamic analysis. And there are plugins for most CI environments that support said tools uh, and a fair amount of open source things. Uh, Bandit is one of my favorites. And however, all these are different tools. Everybody speaks their own language. The results all come in their own way. And then you do uh, a lot of scripting to uh, glue everything together. Lots or of, Lots of hacky pen tester style scripting to hack things together. Don't rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. So scripting to glue everything together or say things like, uh, if this piece of code, uh, is Python, just run the Python pipeline. If this is, uh, a Kubernetes, just run some container scanning and goes on so that you are efficient and everything speaks to everything else and you understand what's going on. Yeah. Uh, if a thing that we are seeing with a lot of the existing tooling is that it's, it, they often make a lot of assumptions as well. Like they, they assume you use GitHub. We don't. Um, they assume you use CI Circle or Travis. We don't. Um, and there's a few things like that, which we, we just, we're finding quite, quite grainy in, in a lot of the existing stuff out there. So, so, uh, talking to our engineers and, uh, the decision makers in the company, we needed something that runs both locally and on cloud because cloud based company, uh, it needs to run. Can you go to the next one? No worries. And then if you go, um, and then it needs to be environment agnostic. So it needs to run both on uh, the MacBook of like some management person and uh, the Linux machines of the engineers also on the cloud or pretty much in a lot of places. They didn't want uh, custom builds for different runs, make, uh, for different setups. It makes sense. And that was the important one. Um, we proposed a solution that like, runs on Jenkins and uh, just dumps results to Elasticsearch. Uh, got shut down very quickly. They told us that uh, you need to be able to mix and match everything. So uh, run locally, uh, run exactly the scanners you want, uh, output to your custom place just because you prefer something like Fabricator or who might switch to Jira. So it needed to be able to do Jira. Or I don't know, uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, we'll have a person on our team whose favorite tool is Elasticsearch, so we needed to integrate Elasticsearch as well. And it need it couldn't be uh, one monolithic thing. Uh, most of the solutions we found are just like this giant monolith. You take it, uh, forklift it into your data center or in a server somewhere, and good luck with changing it. 
And most of all, it must play really well with the CI because if it, you don't do it automatically as part of your build, why are you building it, right? So, yeah, we, we wrote Dracon. Um, so, so Dracon, uh, you, you can explain it. You're great. You can explain, explain where the name comes from. Uh, fair enough. So Kubernetes has this affinity for Greek names. Uh, we don't know why somebody in Google <laughs> must be Greek or must like Greek. And our manager definitely likes it. So uh, he demanded the Greek sounding name. Um, Dracon sounds like Dracon, which is cool. Uh, also, he used to be a very strict uh, Athenian uh, despot. So technically, this solution is meant to be kind of a strict baseline, like, Despotic, yeah, I'd like scan <laughs> for your code. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, he said something like, um, I believe that um, the punishment for stealing is death, and there is no further punish, no worse punishment for anything else, so let's kill it. Not great, but you get it. We uh, definitely don't kill anybody. <laughs> yeah, so, so as, as I mentioned, we're running Kubernetes. Um, we run everything on Kubernetes. Uh, I, I think we have one service, internal service in the company that's not, um, and it's something that we just can't get rid of. But everything else is on Kubernetes within the whole company. Um, we decided, so when we first started uh, looking at uh, writing this, uh, about the same time Tekton came out. Um, Tekton is come, originally written by the Knative Foundation um, and is, is all about running CI pipelines on top of Kubernetes. Um, yeah, Kubernetes is a little bit hard to do that with. Um, it, it's great at running services for long periods. It's great at running one-off jobs, but running jobs kicked off by something else is kind of hard without using something like Tekton. Um, yeah, and, and then to basically step between all of our um, tasks that we that I'll describe in a moment, um, we we decided that we'd make use of proto buffs just to define a really hard API between all of our our tasks. Um, and this is this has been really beneficial from the point of view of uh, we don't let pen testers do what they want and just output what they want. <laughs> uh, we, we basically define what, what we want from each tool and what we expect to go into the next place. Um, it will become a bit more obvious in a moment. Um, yeah, we, we're using Postgres as a great data store. Uh, uh, that, that's, uh, yeah, it's basically used as, as a staple in our company as well. Um, so, yeah, it's a place where you store. Everything. And we're also writing everything in Go and Python. Um, we started off with Python, but we're finding just dealing with Kubernetes a bit nicer in, in Go. Um, the, the libraries are just a little bit better support, so we're slowly shifting that way. And we have one of the four languages that, uh, just two of the four languages of Python and Go in our company that we officially support, so we've got great support in the company as well. Uh, so, how do you go for this? Sure. Uh, yeah, so, so Dracon is a, a, a Tekton pipeline. Um, and to, to explain a little bit about like what Tekton is um, as a, a, a project or a library, if you like, that we use an upstream resource that we use, um, it has a pipeline concept. And in each pipeline, there's a set of tasks um, where one task will feed into another task. So um, a, a really typical CI pipeline might have like a, a Docker build step and then, or yeah, Docker build step and a Docker push step. Um, we're going to sidestep that because uh, that's not what we're interested in security pipelines, but uh, it's certainly what you could use Tekton for. Um, yeah, and then each task has steps, and it might be like uh, uh, it might be like uh, I don't know, like Docker Docker uh, build, and um, that will I don't know. Or what, and Docker push, and then uh, build Kubernetes config, and then deploy it or apply. Yep, and then you can also pass arguments, and the arguments might be like which Git repository you're wanting to build from, um, or it might be like uh, uh, which where, which parameters you want to pass to. In our case, which parameters you want to pass to Bandit as a, a producer in the pipeline. Yeah, so this this architecture is very critical for us because it allows us to template tasks and in a task run just provide. A specific configuration to the team or the specific project, but I can have my PII or PCI uh, task, which checks the code for really basic PCI stuff. And uh, in the task run, 
depending on the team, you have a map with configuration so that you're not taking for Java if the team, if for like Java vulnerabilities, if the team only writes in Golang, for example, that would be inefficient. So because of that, um, Tecton works really well, at least for security pipelines and for the way we, we do things. Yeah, do you want to explain it here? Sure. Um, so the protobufs are uh, yet another project by Google. Uh, it's You can imagine it as an extension to the HTTP protocol. Uh, it's statically typed and uh, stati statically typed and statically formatted. So JSON on steroids, I guess. Uh, and for our use case, we have only four messages. Um, launch tool. What do you want to launch? Launch tool response. Uh, what came back from that? Uh, and a launch tool response has uh, raw data that get uh, in digested to issues. And uh, one issue might or might not have one or more vulnerabilities. So it's, yeah, just, just that. Uh, the next one. And here's how an issue looks like in protobuf uh, format. You have several fields, seven in this case. Um, the first field that the protobuf is going to uh, read is a string with a target, pretty much what did you scan. Uh, the second is the type. Uh, this is a free form. Uh, it works for us because it can be either the tool name or the title or um, dynamic or static or SAT tests, if you run speci security-specific uh, SAT tests or regression tests. And then human readable title, so you don't have to read the full description to find out uh, which uh, vulnerability is what. Uh, severity, as um, as reported by the product. Uh, an optional CVSS. Uh, confidence, as reported by the scanner. And the human readable description, so I can give it to developers without needing to fill in descriptions myself or like copy paste from OWASP seat seats. Um, yeah, and, and often the tools are providing descriptions as well. Yeah. And um, so so far we've covered what runs, how it runs, and how it talks to each other. However, we haven't covered the scripting from the previous, previous, previous slide. So we had to build a templating engine that will take arguments pretty much. Pretty much what do you want to run? Which order? Uh, what arguments? It does some templating magic and then outputs a uh, pipeline. Uh, by the way, I believe this image is super representative of a security pipeline. You need two people to run it. It's a dangerous <coughs> job, hence the hats. And in the background, something's on fire always. So, uh, yeah, uh, so it, it gives you a security pipeline and uh, it can either apply it for you as well or it can just give you a template which you can store or apply for future reference. Yeah, so uh, to go over the architecture, um, I'm, I'm going to come back to this diagram a fair bit. So, uh, yeah, we'll go over it in, in a bit more detail. But first of all, I just want to cover uh, these two guys first, um, the producers and consumers. We've started to talk about them a little bit, but let's define them a bit better. Uh, so producers and consumers, uh, on, on, yeah, on the left side here, um, the producers, they, they're typically, uh, scanning, existing scanning tools. Um, the ones that we use, uh, are GoSec, FindSec, Bugs, and Bandit. Um, and we're using OWASP oh, dependency check yet? No. Yes, we do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, nice. we do. Um, yeah, and, and these, so they're all these things. So the consumers, what they are, are a wrapper script around the tool. Uh, they, they launch the tool. Then they, they parse the results and parse and, and, and put the results back into our protobuf format. Um, and it, it just means that, that the, the tool is isolated from the rest of the pipeline. Um, and, and as long as you can write a wrapper script, which so far we've found them pretty easy to, to write, um, you just completely abstract the tool away from, uh, the results. Um, on the other end, the consumers, um, these are, are things where you want to, want to take data out of the pipeline into something else. Um, the, the really like useful one that we found straight away that we, we implemented first was Elasticsearch. Um, just being able to dump the data somewhere and run a Kibana dashboard, um, or be able to search the results manually. Um, the other, other place is Slack. Uh, that's, that's really useful as well. You end up finding like, you, you we tried, yeah, like if, if you want to dump all your results to Slack, it gets a bit noisy, but, um, we'll, we'll have a quick look at how we can like minimize that, um, with the enricher. Uh, which we'll come back to. 
Uh, but there's also like DFX Urgo you've started using. Yeah, like you need eventually, uh, you start dumping things in Elasticsearch, but you cannot manage things. You cannot chase SLAs. You cannot do a lot of things with Elasticsearch. It's really good for dashboards and for knowing like vaguely what's your, uh, general vulner vulnerability posture. Slack is great for, uh, metrics. Every time somebody runs it, you get an alert. It ran against like these directories, uh, found that many issues. These many issues were duplicates or these many issues have already marked as false positives in the past because defect dojo. And, um, you get some basic results day to day. And depending on how you feel that day or if it's a, a vulnerability chasing day, you can, uh, invite people for a chat. Yeah, and, and the other place is Fabricator, or which we use, but could be Jira just as easily. Um, if you want to say open tickets based off search result, uh, off scan results, um, you have to be careful about noise. Is the only problem? Yeah, that, at the beginning we were just opening tickets. Uh, the people went tone deaf very quickly. It uh, signals noise ratio is important, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so so back to the architecture. So as we've got here, uh, we start off with a code setup container. Um, yeah, th this basically gets your code into the, into the pipeline. Uh, it takes, uh, some secrets. Uh, we pull them out of HashiCorp, HashiCorp Vault. Um, and dump, yeah, and, and basically clone our, uh, our code and, uh, get it ready for the producers to, to do their thing. Um, then the producers, they, they take their launch tool request, protobuf, uh, which says what they've got to do. Uh, they produce their results. Um, and yeah, and, and in a moment we'll go through a demo as well. Uh, put together a video to show off, uh, Bandit. It was in the end, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the, the enricher. This is quite an important step, which we added in, not initially, but it became very obvious that we needed some link here. Um, this is just what we do is we, we take the results and we mark them to say if we've seen them before. Um, uh, so, so we mark them to say that they're a duplicate. Um, because then the, the rest of the, the pipeline can actually consume it sensibly. Uh, and the other, what else have we got? And the other one is if it's something is a false positive, you don't want to be bothering people with false positives, uh, because then you have angry devs at your desk and that's not healthy. Not for you, not for the devs. So yeah, Enricher, uh, goes into a database, uh, for it, for everything that the producer stack produced, uh, makes a hash. So it, doesn't have to uh, do a lot of uh, calculations. Um, goes into the database, figures if the hash exists, if the hash exists before, um, marks it as a uh, duplicate. If the hash exists with a binary value that says uh, false positive, it marks it as well as false positive, and then dumps it on a consumer stack. Yeah, so the consumers, um, as mentioned before, like Elasticsearch was really early one. Um, th these are basically where you, you get your results and push them off to your end uh, Places that are consuming it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, a, a consumer is essentially uh, a tool that grabs and reads results, does something to them that something is completely up to you, and dumps them somewhere. For example, our Elasticsearch consumer uh, dumps raw results into Elasticsearch because different uh, indexes do different things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so our feedback loop is we expect the consumers to, uh, sorry, the, the producers to create false positives, but then the, the enricher is where the logic is to, to remove that data. And if we see that we haven't, uh, we haven't seen uh, a huge need to do this yet, but in the future, uh, I've done it already for Bandit for a couple of things that were very specific to how we write code and it, they were always marked as false positive. So in order to reduce like stress on database and all the things, um, I had to configure Bandit. But the rest of the results are quite off the shelf, I, I can say. But yeah, like the feedback loop is you are you are looking at it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, do you have an automated process? If so, we need to talk. <laughs> Cool. Um, yeah, so, so a point out as well was that like we, we don't expect, so, uh, so, so back to what I said earlier about we don't, we, we, we're finding tools with a lot of assumptions, uh, about what you need and what you should have, like GitHub, which we don't. Um, we, 
want, want you to be able to like do what you want with the, the pipeline. Um, if you don't have any Python in your code base, then don't run Bandit. That's, that should be fine. Um, if you don't use Jira, then don't consume to Jira. Uh, so, or, and, and exactly like you might just want to see a, a whole lot of like raw results in Elasticsearch and deal with it after that. Um, that's, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you can mix and match how you like. Uh, and that, that's the important part for us. Go next. So starting, we started building uh, producers and consumers for pretty much everything we had and then everything under the sun. Um, and eventually, this created a catalog of tasks, which became like a part in the repo called tasks and uh, our central registry, which is called registry. Uh, so producers, I said, wrap tools that uh, dump protobuf things. Uh, and then consumers, wrap tools ingesting protobuf messages uh, from producers. Uh, and because we have a place in the registry where people can go look at the list of producers we support, the list of consumers we support, they can mix and match easily. <coughs> and yeah, so where does, after we built this, we had a major discussion with uh, several like high level people in the company uh, saying, like trying to figure out where does this thing fit in. Um, so the answers were pretty much something like that. You could run it after your CI build if you want. Like it fits anywhere. It can be used as a linter or it can be used as an early warning system. It can be used even to... On, like, on your release cycle if you want. Uh, although that would be very late. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hmm? More draconian. More draconian, yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, somebody asked the question, what if we prevent releases? Um, I think yeah. we both like facepalm at this point, right? Yeah, we, we, we're very much, well, the whole security team uh, company is very much of, we want low friction. Um, we, we don't want to get to the end of the release cycle and be like, oh, no, you can't do that. Uh, we need to have it right at the start, and the earlier the better. Uh, exactly. Yeah, it's not, it's not our job to make that risk decision. You're right. Okay, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Take that risk on. Absolutely. Also, our job is to give a warning as early as possible, so it is as cheap as possible to fix it, right? If a development team has been working on it for six months and then at like month six plus four weeks, you tell them, hey, no, 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 this is not going to the release. Uh, they, they're going to grab pitchforks. Yeah, so, um, yeah, do you want to talk about where we actually ended up? Sure. Again? So we ended up uh, creating a second pipeline uh, and putting Dracon in it. Uh, it's the security uh, like pipeline, for lack of a better name. Uh, so somebody pushes to a branch, a uh, regular pipeline does its thing, and uh, then Dracon does its other thing. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, it generates some reports, which uh, in internally we call them uh, attestations, because parts of these reports also reach clients, uh, depending on contracts. And then... Next one. Uh, the, uh, this, the reports go on for, come to us for manual review because again, false positives or maybe duplicates or maybe any automation in security needs humanized for trias. If you show me a thing that does it automatically, I will be very skeptical. Should we do a demo? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, wanna, I'll see that for you. Right. This is where everything breaks, right? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, uh -huh. <laughs> what you never had a video of oh, break. Uh -huh. So I can put it on full screen and you pause again a second. <laughs> no uh, actually I'll go back there. It's much better. Yeah, like I'm in your neck, right? So, and you, yeah, thank you. So, um, Dracon Demo is our like pipeline environment. It's just a namespace on Kubernetes, right? Makes sense. And uh, because I'm lazy, I launch it with a script. Uh, pretty much the script uh, sets a UUID. Uh, the UUID is the scan name. I prefer it to be UUIDs. Uh, we, we started with human readable scan names, 
I was imagining something like a scan launched by Dev Blah or by Job, whatever. Uh, people started mashing the keyboard and uh, a UUID is much more readable than QWERTY, 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 one, two, three. And then um, it, it uh, replaces this UUID in a, a Kubernetes template, which this specific template will run Defectojo. And um, it executes it. So a, pip uh, a pipeline was created, uh, specifically task run. And now we will get it. It has five steps, uh, and it's still running. So if I go to the logs, and if I open the logs for the code step, it downloaded a bunch of things, installed a bunch of other things, and cloned. I think for these, we're using a tool called Junk Goat. Yeah, we, we, we decided rather than exposing our internal code base, we'd uh, find something online. So we, we came across Django, which uh, is just a vulnerable Django project. Yeah, sorry guys, you don't see internal stuff today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, yeah, yeah, and it has known vulnerabilities that exist in write up so we can check if the configuration and the tools are same. Uh, so if you click, oh yeah, there we go. Um, so that's the logs from the enrichment service. It found a bunch of duplicate issues. Uh, I had run this before, so we could see the enrichment service uh, at work. Uh, these are the hashes of the duplicate issues. And if anybody asks, yes, they are MD5 hashes. Uh, no, I don't expect collisions because uh, I don't expect to have that many bugs. I mean, I try to not have a lot of security issues, right? Just said it. In a talk, it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Just use yourself. <laughs> okay, official promise. If it happens, I'll buy you a beer. <laughs> so the, the second one is uh, step producer mark producer phase zero because, you know, my naming conventions are awesome. Uh, it ran Bandit. Uh, Bandit ran uh, with 142, I think it's the plugin number, and then from zero to 50% to 100%. Uh, from a producer, you don't need a lot of uh, output. You just pretty much need to know if it ran or if it if you have a bug. And then if you continue, uh, consumer, my consumer face one run, found uh, a bunch of issues that are duplicates with a count of two, pretty much. Um, uh, duplicate issues do not start with a count of zero. That would be counterintuitive, right? Um, and you can you can attack me now. And uh, uh, the second one, uh, I for good practice, I always try to add to the pipelines um, uh, like uh, metadata step. Uh, pretty much the last step finds how many issues were found, how many of them were a duplicate, how many of them were enriched. So if the exact same pipeline runs like four different times with four different numbers of issues found. Uh, results and reads, then results duplicate. I know I need to go back to the drawing board or figure out a way to fix it. Yes, uh, we'll go to that in a second. So this is Defect Dojo. Uh, if you're not using Defect Dojo, uh, it's a good, pretty good vulnerability management tool. Most of all, it's free. And it's from OWASP. Yes, 100%. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So Defect Dojo allows you to do a bunch of things. Uh, this is a product I've set, uh, I've uh, set, uh, named Core 3, and it has two engagements, one engagement, hello, Upsec, and uh, another engagement called Continuous Scanning. Uh, this created a test called Static Check, uh, because it runs static code analysis. And these are the issues it found, quite a lot of them. Uh, pretty much a bunch of import by crypto and whatever in different places. Uh, this is how one step looks like. Can you go back for a uh, stop? Yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, the description has all the uh, Dracon metadata, pretty much what the scan ID was, what uh, tool name I used, Bandit, uh, what the type of the issue was. Uh, it imports by crypto, which has known vulnerabilities. The confidence uh, for Bandit, confidence three means high. And yeah, I mean, if you import by crypto, you cannot mean something else. Um, and the description, pretty much. So now I'll go back and launch another pipeline. 
that that uh, so what's this pipeline doing this pipeline uh, brings all the results raw and enriched into Elasticsearch for metrics I could have done both in one pipeline but then the demo would be very short and we would under run the time and that's not good in a talk right yeah thank you no seriously it's just uh, to make it a bit more obvious as to what's going on so cube cuddle drag on demo get the pods second one if you see the first one is completed so it doesn't take uh, a lot of resources you don't have things running constantly uh, we tried with uh, certain pods that would always run and then we plugged Kubernetes. Uh, so you get the logs from the second one. Type faster, man. Type faster. Sorry, man. So a <laughs> bunch of duplicates again. Exactly the same number of uh, duplicates uh, because it found the same number of duplicates. Yeah, right? <laughs> we know we don't have a bug. <laughs> so you go back to Kibana, and uh, this is the Dracon um, index. If you go to Discover, you will see that this specific one, because we only filter specific things, has two issues with severity three, confidence three, so high severity, high confidence, and they're both by crypto. Uh, I, you know, oh no, one Pi Crypto, one hard coded SQL. And I've opened the Pi Crypto. And can you pause? Can you pause? One second. Thank you. Um, so this is exactly uh, what an issue is, uh, as I said before, right? Uh, confidence, uh, optional CVSS. Uh, Bandit doesn't do CVSS, so zero. Uh, a description. Is it false positive? False, mainly because I haven't gone into defect dojo to mark it as false positive. When it was first found, scan ID, uh, scan start time is configurable. You will see that is before the first found, right? So it was first found today, but I set the scan start time in the YAML to be in the past to show that the scan start time can be anytime you want. So you can have, you can play around with however you find things. Severity. Gone. Uh, you need to, to, to scroll to the video all the way. Somebody said that the demo would work, right? Yeah. Imagine if we had the live demo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, da -da -da. yeah, a bit more, tiny bit more. Yeah, a bit more. There. Cool. And uh, the target is um, uh, app management command seed pi. I haven't found a way to decouple it from the paths of um, Tecton. Slash workspace can source is Tecton. And uh, yeah, I, I need to figure this out, but we will. And then um, the title, tool name, type, pretty much sorted. And if you, I could, or maybe in the consumers on the base, like the base consumer class. Um, but yeah, I mean, hmm? yeah, could, could. So yeah, we made this a trans, as you saw. Uh, advantages, you can mix and match any task you want. So yeah, uh, I want, Bandit to defect dojo, find check bugs to like something else. And then I have some legacy IBM, uh, IAX, like whatever. And they need to go into like some specific place because they are my PCI zone or whatever. So this goes there. Yeah, wrapping tools. Uh, as I said, we found it quite easy. Um, it, it's, it seems pretty straightforward, uh, as long as the tool behaves well, which so far so good. Touch wood. Any what? No. Uh, startup? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it run, runs anywhere. Uh, so, so basically, like that demo was recorded in Minikube on a desktop. Um, we're, we're at the moment running it both in a GKE, a Google Cloud cluster, but also in Minikube. Yeah. So, it is CI friendly. I mean, most CIs do Kubernetes these days. And if your CI doesn't do Kubernetes, I mean, ask them to do it. 
I guess. Um, so what's the future for us? Support IS tools. <laughs> <laughs> we need to add way more images. Um, we have several things that uh, we haven't integrated yet. Uh, the Jira integration is taking a while, mainly because Jira. Uh, we have Zap running, but as the baseline, not very smart scan, uh, which doesn't give us a lot of, a lot of flexibility. We need to do a full end-to-end -end tests, proxy through Zap, Zap finds everything, and then goes on to scan everything really cool. You basically scan. need your service running outside of it. It's, it's tough. Yeah, and Tekton doesn't uh, do services yet, uh, so we cannot integrate it with Tekton, so we need to fix the templating engine in order to do all this, but it takes time. And um, this is important to us. We haven't yet found a, way, uh, a reason to extend our messages, but a good example is Zap. It provides automatic remediation, like remediation steps come with the finding. And uh, it would be cool to have uh, an extra remediation step. That said, uh, we do not want to add like arbitrary key value like maps in protobufs because then protobuf becomes JSON and kind of defeats the point, right? Yeah, you can. That's the things you can do, but like not everybody also reports CWEs. It's it's a sensitive situation to find like the common common part. Uh, yeah, I quickly mentioned that like we we didn't build all the stuff like Tekton or Kubernetes ourselves. So I guess like a more of a thanks to the, the people who have provided all the tools that we use. Um, there's a lot out there, uh, yeah, including the, the OWASP tools, like and being able to come here and talk about it is really useful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Wasp. Thank you. Um, talking about open sourcing it. So we, we were hoping to get it open source for this conference. Uh, it didn't quite happen, unfortunately. And make it a OWASP project. Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> good idea. idea. Yeah. Um, we, yeah, we so watch the space. Uh, we, we do have a repository for it already. Um, it's actually Blank. Uh, this talk, this talk will be uploaded there along with the video and uh, some readmes today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it will be full in like one hour. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. What are you committing us to again? Yeah, so so this is where it's going to live. Um, also, we'll announce it as things come up uh, on our personal. Twitter accounts, so yeah. feel free to follow us. So uh, the idea is we'll upload the talk and maybe read me, and then uh, as we open source things. The main problem, we have an internal build system based off uh, Google's Bazel. It's also open source, it's called Please. And uh, it does everything for us, but... It's, it's tightly coupled to, the, to that build system, unfortunately. So. Yeah, like an open source tool that you need like three open, other open source tools to run. It's not really usable, so it takes time to decouple from things. Yeah, but yeah, uh, it's going well so far, and we'll keep you posted. Do we have time for questions? No time? Yeah, yeah, so we, questions? We won't. <laughs> <laughs>